welcome to the 2024 Texas Envirothon Teacher Workshop. We appreciate you giving up your Saturday morning and afternoon to be with us today. Okay, so everyone, I'm Rowena McDermott. Who else do we have with us today? Well, I'm Wendy Riceley. Um, welcome, everybody. And we have with us um, Debbie Bush as well. Hi, I'm Debbie, and I will be tech support. Okay, so are we ready to get started? If we could have a quick introduction, if you guys could just give us your name and let us know if you're an advisor or if you're with the Master Naturalist, that would be great. Whoever's up goes. There's no real order here, I don't think. Okay, I'll introduce myself. My name is Kim Lufkin, and I'm an advisor at Carroll Senior High School. My name is Melanie Harper, and I'm an advisor with the National Energy Education Development Project. I'm Tony Strohmeyer. I'm an advisor with uh, Richardson High School. Good morning. I'm Dennis Brzezina. I'm the uh, soil health specialist for uh, USDA NRCS in, in Temple, Texas. Good morning. I'm Amber Moritz. I would be an advisor at Elta High School. We're just trying to see if we're going to do this next year. I'm Stephanie Martz. I'm an advisor from the Academy of Science and Technology in the Woodlands. Larissa Coffey is my colleague, but she's in a class right now, so she's kind of watching, but she can't really say anything. I'm Mason Guilfoyle. I'm a Texas Master Naturalist. I'm Pam House, hiding today, and I'm a Texas Master Naturalist. I'm Patty Trimmingham, and I'm a Texas Master Naturalist. I'm Andrew Cortez. I'm a coach at uh, Science Academy in Mercedes, Texas. Hi, I'm Mary Christian. I'm a Texas Master Naturalist. I'm Beverly Morrison. I'm a Texas Master Naturalist, and I've been trying to support Texas Envirothon for several years and hope to go into that mode going forward. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. As you know, the current issue for Envirothon this year is uh, renewable energy for a sustainable future. And uh, we have speakers speaking about that from various different viewpoints. Um, we're concentrating on that issue. Uh, what you see today doesn't necessarily reflect what the question is going to be for for um, the oral question, but um, as usual, the question is, if you think about it, fairly predictable. So without any further ado, I think Wendy sent out the dates already. It's going to be Longview, East Texas, uh, April 13th through to the 15th. The oral presentation, as we've done over the last couple of years, the scenario will be sent out in advance, taking into consideration what the, some of the feedback I had last year. I've decided we'll send it out two weeks in advance. So it'll be sent out on Friday, March the 29th by 12 p.m. So um, even though the, the scenario has been sent out in advance, we're going to ask the advisors not advise the students too much when it comes to actual content. You know, maybe um, just let them do their own work. That would be very much appreciated. One bit of feedback after last year's Envirothon. Um, a lot of the judges sort of said, well, the presentations were very good, but they didn't really address the question that was asked. So um, that's what I would say as a hint and a tip for this year. Answer the question. The students can use any resources they can get their hands on, but as usual, all the resources must be properly ref referenced. They can use graphs and photographs and illustrations, whatever, on their PowerPoint slides, but everything must be credited correctly. Uh, the scenario, they should prepare a 20-minute PowerPoint presentation. Um, they will be presenting it live. They won't be presenting it over Zoom. It'll be presented live at the Embarathon competition. So please bring it along on a memory stick. Where we're going to hold the competition, we will not really have access to their internet. They have to bring their PowerPoints on a memory stick. So if it's on Google Slides, make sure you've also got a copy of it with you. And of course, as usual, it'll be 10 minutes for questions. And I will add, you know, it's a very open question, so out of the box thinking, using their imaginations, just putting stuff out there. That's all very welcome. As long as they can validate their choices, there's no right or wrong answer. And um, we're looking forward to hearing what they have to say. Okay. I will reiterate that this is the students' own work. Um, please, uh, you know, encourage them not to ask their parents, not to ask other teachers. Um, we really don't want them to have any help at all 
when they're doing this presentation. It is it's up to the students to figure out what to do. Okay, so I've got on my screen Amber Moritz. You've raised a hand. Is there a question? Yes. Uh, when they present, are they presenting to just a panel of judges or is it in front of other students who are also there? We're going to get to that. But um, yeah, the, for the first round, they can decide who they do or do not want in the room. There'll be their panel of judges. Um, they can have their advisor there watching on if they want to. If they don't want their advisor in the room, they're OK asking for that as well. Um, so it can be just them and the judges or it could be a few extra people. But it's um, usually between three and five judges that will be in the room. Yes. And um, please tell them not to be too scared. The judges, um, all friendly people, <laughs> you know, they, they will be respectful of the students and the effort that they put in. OK, so this is the schedule with uh, thinking of at the moment. It is subject to change. Um, but on a Saturday morning will be our usual training sessions. Um, the students will have a chance to hopefully catch up on their field skills in forestry and soils. Um, we're hoping we're going to get a, a wildlife presenter coming in. That's the one thing we haven't really got lined up just yet, but it will be the usual thing in the morning. And then in the afternoon, we are tentative field trip. So we have not got anything confirmed for that yet, but we do have something in mind. Uh, Sunday morning will be the field test. Sunday afternoon will be oral presentations round one. So all the teams will present, but then on Monday morning, the top three teams. So that's the top three teams using the overall score, not just the oral presentation score, but the overall score will represent. And that time they will do it in front of all the students. So everyone will be in the auditorium and everyone get to hear what the top three teams have to say. The um, oral presentation scores may change at that point for those three teams. And um, then we will decide who the top three teams are. And then the awards luncheon will be a little earlier than it has been in the past. And we're hoping to be able to have everyone sent home by, well, dismissed by 12.30. Are there any questions about any of that? I have a question. Um, what time will it start on Saturday morning? Like, do we need to come up Friday night? Is it going to be, do you have any idea what time it'll be? Yes, we, we're going to start at eight o'clock Saturday morning. It'll be early. You definitely want to come yeah. up on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Well, it depends okay. where you're coming from. If it's an hour's drive away and you think you can get it there in time, then fine. You know, that's that's fine. I think it's not too far away from Dallas. But, um, you know, if you think you're going to, that's your judgment. Your judgment. Well, we're in, <laughs> yeah, we're in Houston, so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Houston is about four, four hours. hours drive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll come Friday night then. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is a little bit different with the oral presentation. So, um, just, um, I mean, just maybe prepare the students that potentially they could uh, do the oral presentation twice and the second time would be in, in front of a group of their peers. So this is something that we haven't done before, but they do this um, all the time at the national competition. So is this another question? Is the second round kind of like the final, since they all have different judges, is it kind of like the final scoring to compare them side by side? Or will the top places have already been officially decided? Um, no, it's what you said first. It's to... Um, the students will present against, you know, because sometimes they may have a different set of judges. Mm -hmm. um, right. They're going to be in different rooms for round one. But in okay. round two, they'll be in front of the same set of judges. As I said, the scores may change and that will determine the final um, top three teams. Oh, I mean, I like so they, won't, they won't lose a top three place because of it. Right. But their position within those top three may change. So basically, the the three teams that are that are presenting in front of everybody are your first, second, third place. Okay, I like that. Thank you. Yeah, it okay. won't be as much of a surprise the next day, but that's okay. For those three, they'll be in a holding room while the other ones present, right? Right. Yeah, we won't have the top three won't be seeing each other's presentations. 
All right. So yeah, no, they they will um they will be in a holding room, yes, and they will leave and go back to that room while the others present. Um, they may be allowed to go in there after they yeah. have presented. I don't know what we'll do with them after they present. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But certainly not before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the awards and um, medals, I mean, as usual, will be first, second, third overall. Uh, for the field test, there's uh, there's awards for the top soils score, the top aquatic score, the top forestry score, the top wildlife score, and the top current issue score. So even though it's difficult to imagine how we're going to talk about the current issue in the field, they will be getting tested on it in the field. There will be a section of the test um, dedicated to the current issue. Um, and then for the oral presentation, there is an award for the best oral presentation score. Now, this may not be one of the top three teams. OK, there may be a team that does really poorly in the field test and does brilliantly with the oral presentation and they get the best score for the oral presentation after overall, but they don't qualify for the top three teams. They will still get the oral presentation award. OK, Wendy, you want to take it from here? Sure. OK, this is my beef. Every year we order these medals and these trophies. And from my experience with my children winning medals and trophies, they're fantastic until they leave home. And once they're gone, these guys end up in landfill. Um, I, I ordered medals in, I think, 2019, and they had the year on them, and that was a year we canceled in Byrathon. And I tried for like a year to find a place that would recycle those medals. Um, I, I sent them back to the company eventually. Um, they could not do anything with them. They said they may be able to get them recycled, but most likely they end up in the landfill. So this is an environmental competition. And I want to give these students something that they're not going to throw away. So my deal is, you know, I mean, if you guys tell me that they love these medals, We'll still get them, <laughs> but um, it would be my preference to give them something like a journal or a book or um, what is your idea this morning, Rowena? I forgot. Oh, some wildflower seeds, something that um, something that will have a bit of a life after after they win it that day. So what are we got this on here. I'd like to hear some thoughts from advisors and master naturalists. Whoever has some ideas, thoughts, what do you guys want to do with these? You know how you can get the certificates and stuff that are printed on um, the biodegradable paper and has seeds embedded in it, kind of like the wildflower idea? Could we print them a certificate? Because I know my kids, they'll keep the metal for a little while. And then, like you said, it'll be wherever. But if we were to give them um, a certificate with their name and everything on it, well, I guess we'd have to write their names or, or just a generic certificate saying that they won that place, but it has seeds embedded in it. It's something they can plant when they get back home. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah I like that idea. Yeah. And that way everybody gets something. I mean, I don't want to take away from the kids getting something, you know, and they've earned something. Those medals are not cheap. Um, we could actually buy every kid a nice book. Um, I don't know if you guys know Doug Talame, but he's got a, a couple of really wonderful books out. And if the kids don't want the book, they're not going to throw it away, most likely. Um, I think they would pass it on to somebody else. What do you think about books? So I had a question. Would you do that? Because I remember one year you did books instead of awards. But one thing about the awards, we keep them at the school the medals go to the students. And I think in lieu of the medals, everyone, and even the certificates, I know we just print them, but we could do the book and the awards and then no certificate or medals, but like the awards stay on campus. Yes. No, I think, I think we would still do the awards, um, the trophies, um, switch, go back. I know. Yeah. I think most schools, it stays on the campus, but yeah, we're talking about the medals that, yeah. Just the, do the awards for everybody else. Do they all stay on campus? They don't go home with any students, I'm assuming. 
Uh, I keep the the awards, the medals. You could always just reduce the medal down to just that one person and not the whole team. So you keep the medals? The kids don't? I keep the awards, the plaques or whatever. Uh, they would take the medals. But maybe if you want to reduce the medals, you just give it to the one person, not to every single person on the team. That seems unfair. Uh, well, I mean, they're the specialists, right? And that, that oh, soil I see part. what you're saying. So you're, if the soil person won, you just give the medal to that soil person, not to everybody on the team, just because of the soil person. So at least you could reduce your quantities down to just two, three, you know, or a medal for every one. You just got five medals as opposed to you know, 50 medals or 10. Or yeah. one book. <laughs> Are the books a really bad idea? The kids not like books. I saw that most of the kids got a book that wasn't even related to Envirothon. Like some of them were like, you know, fiction books and stuff like that. So what the books that they had ordered, like when you said to pick a book, some of them picked a book that's not even related. And I was like, that's kind of, you know, I'd want to, uh, you know, I want them encouraged to get something related, but some did not. I mean, there are things we could buy um, field, like a field book um, for the related categories, but I don't know if they would use that after that point and and when we ordered it for the kids we we really did want them to get get something that was useful to them i don't know how useful they actually are to my kids Uh, we're down here in houston but my kids actually love field guides and things where they can look at it and see different organisms that live in the area different plants and everything i don't know how much use they actually put them to but they love looking through them so if you had like a small pocket field guide as a reward okay that's a good idea, actually. No, I I think some of my kids, even if like the field guides, if they don't want them, they'll give them back to me and then I can use them for further environment competitors. Like they might just give them to me like, well, here, sir, you keep it because I know your competitors will need it next year. So it, it won't go to waste if they don't want it. OK, somebody else has got a hand up, Juan. Hi, yes, I, I, I'm completely new to, to this, my first year actually sponsoring a team. Um, I never really thought about the metal uh, being an issue, uh, but I know our girls are uh, very highly motivated about getting something that is individual that they can take. Um, most of our girls are first gen, so when they they go uh, home, they that they pride in, in the medals that they take. Even if it's not a big, big medal, I don't know how big this is. I've never seen it. Um, but I'm wondering if there is a way to even have something as small as a pin um, that they could use instead. Uh, our girls use blazers, um, the high schoolers, and they put their pins on, on their blazers. So whenever they're uh, walking around school, uh, the other girls in all girls schools, they can see what those are and they ask about them. Like, what did you get this from? And what is this one? And it's very motivating for them to be able to talk about those things because it, it actually helps recruit more students for the following year. Yes, we did talk about that yesterday, actually, is one of the things, um, one of those, um, like a big Envirothon pen. Um, we haven't done that before, but that's something that's something to consider for sure. Thank you. And Dennis has put a couple of things in the um, some Kaufman field guides. That's another good idea, I think. Would a keychain be too cheesy? Like it has the Texas symbol in the front and in the back embroidered like top soils, top aquatics. Would that be too cheesy? No, I think that's a good idea. What do you guys think? I think it's a good idea. It's a useful thing. <laughs> Can I add? Sorry, I was I wanted to mention something that you mentioned the keychain. Um, I think that's a cool idea too. Uh, but there are also uh besides the, the utility of it, there is also the part of their interest. And a lot of them are carrying a bunch of these little uh, I don't know, little bracelets that they add things to it. I mean, that could be something that they're adding to it too. It just fits like a keychain. Um, but uh, I'm wondering if when we're thinking about these particular awards. And we're mentioning um, not throwing them away. Then is that being in a way replaced by something that is easier to to get or cheaper to get, or is it because we don't want to use uh, um, more materials that end up in the landfills? It's because we don't want to use more materials that end up in the landfill. They're probably cheaper to get the metals, so we'll probably be spending a little bit more money to get something that's not going to become trash in four years. I mean, and I've seen this firsthand. 
you know, and so is Rowena. I have like a whole under my kids' beds upstairs. There's just like hundreds of things that they got in school that are not important to them now. Okay. So. Yeah, I, though I do think sometimes the smaller things do get kept. You know, I like the pin idea because I do still have some little badges and pins I had in high school. I, you know, because they were small enough to pop in the corner of a jewelry box and I just kept hold of them. So um, I think something like that might be the way forward. Thank you. Another thing before we run out of time here, we were um, hoping that we would be able to um, get something as well this year for our advisors. We really do appreciate the advisors. We know you know, this competition couldn't happen without you guys, and, and you're very dedicated to these students. So we just wanted to get some feedback. If we could get something around the $25, $30 range for advisors, is there something that you all would like? Uh, I don't need anything. This is the fun part. This is the trophy that doesn't get dusty. So just put that money into the kids, and I'm good. I don't need anything. I second that. Really? You guys are so dedicated. It's for our girls. I've never done this before, but I can honestly say when I go places and I take my kids with me, I I don't want the pen. I don't want the cozy. I don't want another bag. <laughs> Just, you know, give my kids something and we're good. All right. Okay. That sounds good. That, that answers that. Yeah. Okay. So are there any more questions or comments or anything? I, I do have several questions, and I, mean, I suppose this is for everybody. Um, again, I am completely new to this competition this year, and I'm new to the school too. So I, I would love to receive some sort of uh, guidance in terms of the preparation for it. Um, I, I tried to find information on, on our website, and it just became a bit uh, confusing. So if anybody is willing to just share some tips on uh, their experience, I would greatly appreciate it. What school are you from? One. Uh, I'm at Irma Renhel uh, Young Women's Leadership School. Have you emailed Dallas. me? Have I emailed with you? Yes, we've corresponded about this workshop. Okay, okay. Um, also, I can answer any questions you have as well. But if if one of the other teachers who's been doing this a while would um, be willing to um, reach out as well. And I'm thinking maybe if Tony or Andrew, they've been doing this for a really long time, maybe one of those folks could reach out. Um, if I could just add to that, Wendy, um, if you go through our website, I know there's a lot of stuff on the website, but um, especially we do have some old tests up there, I believe. That'll give you an idea of the sort of thing the students are asked. Um, I'm not saying the same thing comes up every year, but it'll give you the idea of the sort of things we expect our students to know. And, um, you know, certainly a lot of resources are up there. So if you look through the resources, it'll give you an idea of, of the sort of the curriculum that we expect them to um, be familiar with. Um, if there's anything really unusual coming up in the test, then it'll usually be covered on the training session on the Saturday. Yeah. That's my bit. <laughs> and also the, the website does look overwhelming. I will agree. But there is a lot of um, if you could just maybe take an hour, you know, at a time and just go through things. There's a lot of good information on there. Yes. And one thing I will say, because it's teams of five students, what usually happens, um, it's good to encourage the students to start when they're freshmen or even sophomores and let them do it for a few years, because by the time they get to being seniors, they're really familiar with the material and they're really familiar with Envirothon. But uh, what they usually do is split it between them. So you'll get someone who says, OK, I'm going to concentrate on soils. Not that they ignore everything else, but they take one aspect to concentrate on. So you'll have someone who will concentrate on soils, someone will concentrate on the forestry, someone will concentrate on wildlife, and so on and so forth. And that way it kind of splits the work up a little bit between them. Thank you. Uh, that's actually what we've been doing. Uh, I think my my main uh, concern is that the school itself is new to all of this. And so none of the students have an idea of what this was. So I kind of have to get to figure out from the website, what are the topics and then separate them based on that. 
And I spoke to my colleagues about the what you have from the previous years on what they look like, but then I didn't know about the instruments that they need to find and who do we contact. And so I, that's what I'm trying to say. That there is there is okay. a lot of information, but it's, there's no, at least for me, um, something that can give me a good example. Uh, but I will take Anthony's information um, as, as a Tony to study with that. Um, I hopefully I'll get some information from him. Thank you. Okay. Yes, and certainly give me a call or send me an email as well. Okay. Thank I can you. give you some information or Rowena. We've traditionally brought two teams to Envirothon, but we, we were wondering if, if we could bring three teams. Um, the flyer says two. Yeah, I think I announced it when Larissa was not here, but yes, um, this year we'll still accept three teams um, because we haven't, you know, built our numbers back up to what they were pre-COVID. Okay. Um, and so, yes. Good. We do, We have a... We want to build the future team. It seems like we're going to be bringing the same two teams we brought last year. Um, but we'd like to bring like a sophomore team to, you know, give them a taste of it to sure. get them experience for next year. Okay, great. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Yeah, the more kids, the better. As long as we can, <laughs> as long as we can figure out where to put them all. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's great. Thank you. Could I also ask a question about logistics at the sure. uh, actual Envirothon? Sure. Yes. So as we're trying to determine like the vehicles that we need to take, is it going to be similar to the last one where we're going to have to take our teams to locations or is there going to be like some kind of a, a bus there or it's yeah. Okay. So um, in terms of the field test, um, it should all be done on foot. There will be no um, need to bus students from one station to the next. Yes, you will need a vehicle on site. You will need to transport your students from the hotel to where we're going for the training and to where we're going for the field test. Uh, we're not talking about great distances. You know, um, there was those two places are fairly close to each other, but um, we're looking for a field trip, which would be slightly further afield, and you would need to transport your students for the field trip. Yeah, the field trip, if, if we get the field trip, it's pretty... Bar. I want to say 50 minutes or so. So definitely you would need a, a vehicle for that. And um, we will try to get the hotel, uh, a good rated hotel that's very close. Um, I think there's one, it's 10 minutes or so. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, we were going up there next week. So that's one of the things on our list is to get a hotel and block some rooms and get a discounted rate. So it's in Longview. But the energy topic this year, is it broader so that the, could the actual scenario be outside of the, the long view purview or is it still going to be like, like as in its long view area? Okay. The oral question scenario may or may not be <laughs> <laughs> just long view. I would say but probably not be just long view. Probably not be just long view. In fact, in terms of the soils and aquatics and the wildlife and the forestry, that can be very local. Um, I think a lot of the questions for the current issue will be um, not so local. We'll be thinking more statewide or nationwide. Does that answer your question? It does, but then I'm trying to wrap my head around how if the scenario is statewide, possibly, then since the scenario has to incorporate all the other um, topics within it that are going to, I guess that's what I was just trying to, to pick up. Like if it's a statewide scenario, then should we, should our kids be familiar with statewide things <laughs> as well? Yeah. Um, there will be some general principles with your other four topics that can be applied anywhere. Um, so the specifics you'll be asked will be in the field test. And the specifics will be local to Longview. But when it comes to implying general principles to the oral question, um, we won't be looking for specific Longview information. We'll be looking for more general, we'll be looking for more general principles. Okay, thank you. Okay. Larissa, I'm not sure that that, I'm not sure that we answered that oral presentation question exactly. <laughs> so I'd say... 
just be open to whatever. <laughs> okay, we'll just study everything. <laughs> yes. Well, do do bear in mind the oral presentation scenario will be sent out to you two weeks in advance. So um, you can't help your students prepare it, but you can, if they come and ask you questions, you can help them find resources. So, Wendy, are you going to get back to the Texas Master Naturalists for what it is we could do for you if we chose to go up there? Oh, certainly, yes. We're gonna, um, Debbie and I are going to work on the volunteer um, jobs on the website. Um, if anybody, you know, I mean, it's a big ask for Master Naturalists to travel up to Longview, I think, unless you, maybe you have family or something up there. Um, but there'll certainly be jobs if anyone is able to do that. Okay, so you'll get back with this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I just want to clarify. So you just you said the oral topic, uh, the oral portion topic will be sent to us a couple weeks before the event. Yes. Yes. March the 29th by midday, you will have the scenario sent to you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, again, I'm completely new to this, and uh, and I'm trying to work with my girls. They're all uh, 11th graders, led by a senior, uh, and uh, the the questions are about the two sections of it: the written portion of it and the oral portion of it. And when we look through the the site, there is a lot of information, and obviously, I understand that. So we have been focusing on just having a working understanding of all the topics of it so far. Um, and be able to to explain or at least um, pull certain types of knowledge um, when needed from those specific areas. But I notice that the confusion that I have is that there I notice that there's like five topics, and then there's the current issue. Um, and I'm not wasn't so sure if both of those are going to be in a written section and then the oral section, or if those are separate. Okay, so the field test, which is the written section, um, it'll have different question pages for the four topics plus a question page for the current issue. And those four topics, forestry, wildlife, aquatics, and soils are always the same four. Okay, when it comes to the oral presentation, the question is usually asked around the current issue. But because it is in Virathon, they do like, you're supposed to incorporate your knowledge on the environmental issues that you have learned by studying the other topics. Okay, so um, you cannot discuss food growth without looking at water quality and water availability and soil health and stuff like that. Um, so if that makes any sense to you. It makes perfect sense. Actually, that's the way yes. that I, I would framed it with them. Yeah. Um, but I, I uh, OK, so I, un I understand that part. So the, the fifth set of tests that are out there on the on the field test will be on the current issue. Yes. So you'll need to know stuff about the current issue for the field test, as well as the oral presentation is based on the current issue, but it kind of encompasses everything. It encompasses the soils, the forestry, the wildlife, the aquatics, all that you need to answer the oral presentation, which is based on the this year's current issue. Juan, would it help? We just did it a couple of years just to give you a perspective of what it feels like. So we drive out to some location that they won't tell us. It's a secret until we get there. And then and then your your kids, your group, they will start somewhere. And and th there's like five. Is it five stations? I don't know. And then each. So they walk to these stations and they together as a group. And when they get there, they get handed five different tests and they're different colors normally. So the, the person that's the current issue person will get a test the per, and it's on just current issue. And it has questions about current issue. And then the person that's the soils person will get a test and then everyone will get a different test. Some of the tests are just answer questions. Like, like the current issue person will probably just have to sit at a table and just sit there and try to answer the questions. 
the soil person might have to walk to a, a hole that was dug in the dirt and then analyze that, that, that dirt hole. Or they might have to pick up a pile of dirt and analyze it. Soil, that's called. <laughs> yeah, the, the, wild, the wildlife person might have to look at a skull or a snake skin or something and also have questions. The, the tree person might have to go find a tree that they in in the forest like I'm sorry I'm just remembering last year because it was so funny because I mean it's intense and fun and they love it and they're so scared and nervous and also laughing because then they try to get each other to help one another because they have to measure something and then the other one's done with the test and then they're like help me I need you to see if this is done right so it's it's a very much like weird combination of individual knowledge plus team encouragement and support. Yes. And then they finish that place and then they're like, time to move. And then they have to travel in some trail to some other location where there's a whole new set of tests and a whole new set of trees and skulls and poop or fish or something to look at. Yes, that describes it exactly. That's brilliant. Thank you, Loris. Thank you. I, I, re- I that sounds like a blast. I kind of want to do it myself. Um, so and that brings a really good question, which is my main concern is um, the the instruments that you use um, are those things that we are supposed to find and and to provide them access to, or is that something that they need to learn how? It, that's the problem. Is like I can get them a bunch of stuff. But it's like, how do you, what is it that you need, that I need to provide for them um, at this point? I think that's another Larissa question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, she's done this. Yeah. So the, and forgive me, my brain is a little bit exhausted right now. So I'm try- I can't even remember the name of anything. You need a clinometer. A clinometer okay. is a good one to know. It's the one that measures the height of the tree. And I would suggest, I don't, I miss where you're at, but like if you have time to contact like your local um, forestry service and like see if you can, sometimes they'll go to you or you can go to them and they'll have a forester teach the kids how to use that and the prism thingy, which I still can't, I can't figure out how to use properly. Yeah, not that, yes. And then there's the, there's this, the sec, is it Secchi? I don't even know how to pronounce it properly. Secchi, the Secchi the tube. Secchi tube for aquatics, yes. Yeah. Or you can use the Secchi thing with the, the with the string, right? But you don't, do you have to use the tube or, or the disc? Yes, a tube and a string. And then there's also, you'll need to have a soils book too. Oh, but yeah. What a lot of these teachers do is they contact somebody with that's close enough that can come out and is willing to come out and show your kids how to do these things, show your kids how to use a soil, um, a color book. And that's what this workshop was for a while when it was in person. We had people here doing that. Um, It's kind of, I guess, evolved a little bit. So it's it's mostly current issue now. But you can, you can, you're in Houston, yes? I mean, I'm in Dallas. You're in Dallas. Why do you not think you were in Houston? Um, so who's close to you, Tony? Are you fairly close? Uh, I'm in Richardson. Uh, that's pretty close. <laughs> which, part of, which part of Dallas are you? Uh, well, our school is by the Fair Park. Okay. So you're just downtown-ish there? Yeah. Right. So I bet Tony has a lot of resources, a lot of people that he can get you in touch with. That would be able to come out and and help your kids. And honestly, you guys could study together if you you know if you have things that you're doing with your kids, maybe. Yeah, I mean, each team has a unique way of preparing. I mean, there's no right or wrong way. Um, one thing I would say is um, so on the training day on the Saturday, that's one of the things that will be covered when they get into their individual groups. Um, we we will always ask the um, the presenters to go over you know how they texture the soil how to let the kids sort of practice using the color box refresh how to use a clinometer um, how to use the prisms they need to know how to do it somewhat before they get there. I don't think they can learn yes, it it's best if they can practice it beforehand 
I mean, you can watch all the videos in the world and there are videos out there on YouTube giving you instructions on how to use these things, but having some practice is invaluable. So um, if you can get hold of somebody either from your local forestry service, your um, national resources department, NRCS. yes, NRCS, or the um, AgriLife Extension Office, they... Um, they will also have, especially with soils, they have a big soils competition with the 4-H um, club. So um, they should be able to sort you out, maybe even lend you some equipment that you can, you know, practice with and maybe even set you up with someone who can come in and give you a tutorial. So I think my my main concern was just the the types of tools that we're expected to know. Yes. I, and, and also my um positionality in terms of my assistance i do uh work at the university also so i have access to a lot of stuff mm -hmm. i just don't know what stuff they need to know uh right. so which is my main thing and and on the i noticed i went through all the stations that you have with the answers on it um but i wasn't sure if those were things that you would normally have where these specific tools will be used again. Are they supposed to know those, or you will bring in new ones every time? That's my my main no, thing. No, we tend to um, when it comes to forestry and soils, especially. Um, it's very similar questions that come up. So, if you invest in a clonometer and um, a diameter tape and a prism, um, perhaps even a um, Compass, because we've had questions that have been using compass points before. Can you think of anything else, Wendy? Well, I would say with the chronometers, make sure you get the right kind. Um, I don't know which kind that we are using. I can't remember if it's percentage or slope, but we provide the tools there. And if the kids don't know how to use you know, they might know how to, to use the clinometer that they practiced on. But when they get to the test, it's a different type. It's either I can I'll have to look and see which type that we have. It's either slope or percentage. But you want to make sure that you're studying with the type of tools that we have. And I can I can let you know what that is. But it's just a color book, a clinometer, a D tape. Be familiar with how to get tree height. Um for the clinometer, you usually use percentage. You have the percentage ones. That's what okay, you put. Thank you. And then one, since you're in the university, if you can borrow many different types of skulls and have them do dentation formula and like look at the features, like the morphology of the skull, not like not like oh, this is the cranial or but certain things like make them a predator versus a herbivore, like life, like uh, wildlife uh, history via via skull. Like, oh, this skull is an insectivore, and how can you tell? So the more samples you have, that would be good. Dental formulas also frequently. Yes. So we do expect them to know, be able to identify by common name, common species of birds, um, especially if bird is unique to an area, we would expect them to know that. Um, we would expect them to be able to identify by common name um, species of trees, Common butterflies. I mean, if there's anything really that's going to come up in the test that we think, oh, it's not reasonable for them to know that, we will throw it into the resources. So that's a massive clue for you. That, that one year, you all were real fun and you gave us like birds and alligator calls and all this other weird animal calls. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, that was that actually changed. the wildlife. Yeah, it was bird calls and frog calls and things. Yeah, yes. like this alligator. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, yeah. this makes a lot more sense. Um, it, it's just, I think my students are, especially the leadership of seniors, it's just overwhelmed with all the senior mm -hmm. things. And then she, this is her legacy project. So she wants right. to leave a, a good mark. Um, yeah. So, so don't and, like stress too much. The main thing is to I, have fun yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I want to do. Just bring in this stuff so they can actually do it and, and get used to it. And like I said, I, I focus more on working knowledge than just memorization. Um, mm. But that's what they were doing at the beginning before I started working with them. They were studying these big things about every single part of every fish that's out there. Uh, so I was like, so how are you going to use this? And then they went blank. So, uh, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, we need to prepare better. Um, so I, I, I appreciate that. So just to, to um, 
clarify on my end. They on this written portion, like you mentioned, the stations, you take them to a place and they do the answer the questions. Is that the, the stations that you have? You said they're all happen there, but then you go to another place and have yeah. more of the so stations. The test is, yeah, the test is split into five so, um five pieces and they go to a different station for each of the five pieces. And then what it also does is it splits the students up. So we'll have groups wandering around. And they'll go from one station to the next. So you don't have like 50 kids around one station. Yeah, you know, they'll be they'll be split up amongst all the stations. And then once they've finished the test at that station, they hand it in. So that's over and done with. They go to the next station, they get a brand new test, different questions. And from the different topic, like or no, it'll still be, yeah. So they will each each station they will have a five-page test. One Got page it. will be for each of the four main subjects, and then the extra one will be current issue. Okay. So five stations. Well, each station, and then you have all of those in there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, again, the oral presentation, they just do it there. They'll know two weeks in advance. That I can I I, I cannot help them. I, I can only provide resources. What are, um, other than that, yes. what are my, my limitations? Okay. Okay. Um... <laughs> You can encourage them to read because we always send it out with the current with the current issue. Does um, well, I mean, with the oral presentation scenario, we always send out the the judging score sheet, which acts as kind of a um, a rubric, a rubric for them. I would encourage them to take a look at that because sometimes teams miss points um, over not doing things like making sure everyone takes part, or um, you know, they're not. They have to tuck their shirts in. Yes, please. We, we had them in blazers and they thought that they looked better with the blazers and the untucked. And then they got points off for having their shirts not tucked in. Did yes. they really? Yes, we were. Oh, yes. we were so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they have to look presentable. So there's no, like, you don't have to wear ties and everything, but, you know. Um, they'll be yes, all wearing yes. the Texas and Marathon t shirts. So they'll need yes. to bring, like, a pair of either try to be matching if they can all black slacks or brown slacks or skirts or whatever uh mm -hmm. just look kind of neat and polished look as neat as they can yeah we'll have um a presentation on presentation skills this round um as well for the kids so they'll get a little bit of um um, a little bit of information but it's too late for them to pack anything so they need to bring everything with them <laughs> When yes. One, one still on YouTube. There's the old AST oral presentation. Like it's old and it's the old style, but you can see what it looks like. It looks it's going to be different because they use PowerPoints now. And if you want the new way, like the PowerPoint way, you can look at the national version. They're a little different, but they do PowerPoint. The national yes. Version. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to give them tips on how to create a good PowerPoint slide. You know, um, maybe don't use 11.0 font size and, you know, <laughs> 500 words a slide, <laughs> you know, something like that. Um, you know, that, that's OK. Yes, yes. But when it comes to um, how they answer the question and, and the way they approach the question, that should be entirely their own work. OK. Question. Does the presentation have to be in PowerPoint or can it be like in something like Canva? C-A-N-V-A. What is that? I don't even know what that is. Um, <laughs> Can I interject here for the presentations? Yeah. yeah. Assume you will not have an internet connection. Okay. You know, students will have to be able to press the next slide and we're not going to have clickers or anything like that. So it'll be somebody hitting that arrow key. Yes. So is Canva something similar to PowerPoint? So Canva, they can create slides just like uh, anything else, but it's in Canva. So I, I think it may be one of those that just slides down, like you just yeah. keep moving it up. It right. sounds like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you can actually download presentations from Canva in the PowerPoint yeah. format. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm very used to that. So like that, that's not a, a big deal. And I've 
I'm a presenter okay. during the research community. So I that I, I got that covered. It's just yeah. the the structure and the content that I wasn't sure. And mm -hmm. so when you mean the the written section, you mean it's the the, the field and the answers that they write. Yes, it's a field so test. Like we do ask, essay. yeah, we do ask the um the writers of the test not to make like you know essay answers because nobody wants to grade those so it will be short or short answers it will be multiple choice it will be single word answers stuff like that so basically what you have on the website it's an example of what to expect yes. in a sense okay. yes. i don't think single word answers usually i mean sometimes they do have to write a bit well sometimes a sentence you know you know explain why but nobody wants an essay Yes. Okay. And that's what I meant because I saw that and I I was thinking that was an assessment. And then you had a writing portion when there is an essay. Uh so I was kind of thinking that was yeah. like not there. Uh okay, that makes perfect sense. It's a lot easier to understand now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, How many teams are each of you guys planning to bring this year? For us, it's the first time and it's a legacy project. It's only one. Okay, so you got one. Tony's got two. Andrew? I've got three. Three. Larissa, three. We've got, we've got three as well we'd like to bring. Kim? I have one to two. I don't know about the second one. Okay. okay. So we're looking at about 10 teams. Okay. That's good to know. I've got to get this year. We're going to try and order the T-shirts earlier than we did last year. So hopefully they arrive in time for the competition and not the, get locked away. So we can't get them until afterwards. That's what happened last year. <laughs> Since you mentioned the, yes. the 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 what dress, can they wear? I mean, they they wear blazers and the uniform, the skirts. Are they allowed to do that and just wear your the camp shirt or I mean the competition shirt? Okay, so um, for the field tests, they can wear what they like. Um, oh, very the often they have their own school shirts on. Uh, for the oral presentations, it's very important that the judges cannot be able to recognize which school they come from. When they come in and present, they will have a team number and they will give the judges their team number. So they can't wear anything that supports their school badge or their school name or anything like that. And they'll have on the Envirathon t-shirt. I don't really allow them to put on a blazer or anything. Yes, it's, it's better if they're all dressed the same because, you know, some kids have more resources for smart clothes than others. So, you know, as long as yeah. it's pair of um like black or brown you know gray slacks and 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 the t-shirt it should be fine but for the field test make sure that they have on sturdy shoes because it's outdoor yes and i strongly recommend a belt as well when you when you're doing the oral presentation some kids forget to put a belt on i i think a belt makes a whole lot of difference really does <laughs> real quick about the about the field test for you one um make sure that they have an extra pair of socks maybe just in case they get they get like wet or something and then oh my gosh please because we're never going to forget this one is bring bring bug spray because we were attacked by mosquitoes the size of of dragonflies the last time <laughs> and then sun and sunscreen because they're outside for a really long time and then they need to have a water bottle because it, yes. it's, it's hot in the sun. Yeah, and we'll, have, we'll provide water, but everybody does need to bring their own water bottle. And we usually have the sunscreen, some sunscreen, and maybe we forgot it this time, last time, and the bug spray. Or sometimes it's not where they are. They're also not allowed to actually bring anything with them on the field test. So, like, no, no purses, no backpacks. Well, no, we changed that a while ago um, because we had an issue with one young woman not having her personal supplies with her of her hygiene products. So, but the backpacks will get, you know, so there's a lightweight backpack with a, a rain jacket in it and change of socks. That's absolutely fine. Um, but if they're carrying any kind of um, resource materials, a cell phone, a notebook, a uh, field guide or anything like that, they will get the whole team disqualified. I mean, so, unless they um, need to bring a backpack, I would not bring a backpack with them. I would encourage them just to bring their water bottle because that's all they need with them. Okay. We will provide pencils, clipboards, um, everything they need to write the test will be given to them at each test station. I do remember one year it rained and my kids had to bring raincoats and rain boots. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, so, so that said, um, again, uh, I'm also new at an all girls school, so I'm learning a lot about what you mentioned. Just the hygiene bars have been there and been available. Um, I noticed that on the application, it says that the advisor has to be the same gender as the students. I was not aware of that from the beginning. Okay. This is an all girls school. Yeah, you do not. No, you don't have to be the same gender to be the advisor. But when you travel with them to Envirothon, you should bring a female chaperone with you as well. Okay. So maybe try to get a mom to go with you. The, the the principal just said, I'll go if there is, it's basically, a, she's a, a woman. Uh, and I, I was freaking out. I was like, I have been working with this team and there's a, and I'm not a woman, so I can't. So she's like, I'll yeah. go. Yeah, but it doesn't, it, no, it isn't. Um, teams often bring two, two people along, one of each gender, just to cover all the bases. So um, you even though it's just one team and it's all girls, you can both come along. Right. Um, if you go to the national event, they require that you have a male and a female chaperone. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, awesome. Okay. <sighs> Thank you. Yes. Okay. Well, any other questions, feel free to email us, phone us, whatever. We'll try our best to answer as fully as we can. And and Juan, do you mind me asking, what do you what do you teach? I teach uh, at the school of science and engineering middle school, but in the with this one club, it's I just sponsor the Envirothon and the girls and stuff. I'll have a lot of clubs. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, for them, I don't teach them directly. They're the eleventh graders, and I only sponsor the club and guide them. I teach the middle schoolers um, STEM. If if any of them are in AP environmental science, there's a lot there's a lot of stuff that overlaps. But I don't know I don't know if you have contact with that teacher because a yes. lot of the stuff a lot of the stuff in the that they go over is part of Envirothon. So there's some like there's a whole unit on soil and soil quality, which is kind of the foundation for the soil section. So if any of your kids are in that course, or if you know the educator that does that, that could help. Thank you so much. That definitely helps. Before we log off, I just wanted to bring up a comment that Juan made about, you know, saying he was excited and he wished he could also do the field test. And I'm wondering if anybody's going to tell him. We get to do it too. We, and it's, a, it's, it's, it's hilarious. We walk around and don't know a lot of answers. And then we know some of them, and then we argue over a few in a kind way, and then we get tired, and then we just get a snack and sit down in the shade. Mm -hmm. And then you hand them all in, and they don't get graded because nobody writes their name on top of the sheets of paper. Nobody wants us to know who they are. <laughs> this, yeah. this is awesome. Um, thank you. I cannot thank you enough for this workshop. I, it definitely helps a lot. And for you all for staying and, and guiding me on this. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And I cannot wait for it. Maybe, hopefully, Nick, I'll be better, uh, feel better prepared for it. Yeah, okay. you have to do it one year to begin with, just to get your feet wet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And my first right. year, I came in blind. I had no idea. We didn't even know how to wear T-shirts or jeans or what we were doing. We just showed up and tell us what to do. And it was fun. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it.